My name is Michael Rooks. I'm the Whelan Family Curator of Modern and Contemporary Art at the High Museum of Art in Atlanta. And I am taking over the Instagram story today for the museum for Ask Me Anything. So here we go. Question number one, what are the changes you want to see in the Atlanta art scene? Well, I think I'd like to see more diversity in general in uh, our visual arts scene, not only at the High Museum uh, and other institutions like Mocha GA um, and elsewhere, but also in our gallery scene. It'd be great for artists from other parts of the country or even other parts of the world to show here in Atlanta in our galleries, to provide the opportunity for artists here who are based here to have a conversation, to begin a conversation with artists uh, who have a different perspective or who have a different experience. I think that'd be uh, one of the top things I'd like to see. In addition to uh, a more committed engagement um, from local collectors, frankly, with uh, our gallery scene and uh, uh, the artists who are based here in Atlanta. Question two, do you consider Atlanta to be part of the international art scene? Well, to an extent, I think it is part of the international art scene because we have many artists who are based in Atlanta, who live and work here, who show their work not only across the country, but also in other parts of the world. You think of artists like Rackwood Bailey or Cosmo White, uh, who we still claim here as an Atlanta artist, um, Paul Stephen Benjamin, uh, Nikita Gale, who also is uh, someone I would claim as Atlanta, even though she's based in Los Angeles. Artists who are showing alongside their peers uh, across the country and in some occasions uh, internationally. And to me, that constitutes uh, an international scene, a conversation that's relevant to artists everywhere. And uh, that has been growing since I've been here in Atlanta and becoming more vibrant in the past several years. And uh, it's, it's incredibly encouraging. Question three is, what are you reading? Um, because I'm doing an exhibition in 2022 on the subject of love, um, I'm reading a few books uh, relevant to the topic, one of which is uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's uh, book, True Love. I've got my books here. It looks backwards to me in the video, but I can fix that. Uh, and also Diane Ackerman's A Natural History of Love here. I feel like I'm on uh, the Oprah book special. Uh, and I'm also finishing Orhan Book's The Museum of Innocence because, well, I got distracted and I didn't finish it. So I'm getting there. And one book which I haven't gotten anywhere w yet with um, is Alain Badiou's Handbook of Antibiotics. That's a tough one. Question four is about storage. Because most museums have the majority of their collection in storage, the High Museum is no exception. And uh, the question really was, what do we have in storage? A question that could take days and weeks to answer. But I'll... Uh, just mention a few things that I've had in mind, uh, things that I'd like to bring out on view sooner rather than later, including an installation by Houston Conwell. Uh, it was in, made in 1989, and it's titled The New Cakewalk. Um, it's from a series of works about the history of the cakewalk by uh, this great late artist. Um, there's another installation by an Atlanta-based artist, Marty Emanuel, from 1989. It's untitled, but it's something that uh, I would love to see out on view and hope to make that happen someday while I'm still alive. Um, Elizabeth Murray's fabulous painting called Brush's Shadow from 81 is something I always love seeing out. It's in storage right now, unfortunately. And we also have works by Mark Rothko. Um, several are up right now. Uh, one that's in storage is the largest from 1952 and uh, it's number 73. Uh, it's a beautiful painting and uh, that comes in and out of storage and is shown often. But lots of work uh, in our storage area and we try to rotate them uh, as often as we can uh, in a manner that makes sense uh, for our audience to put together a story and, and in a way that contextualizes the work so that we do justice to the artist. Question five is, do you have a favorite uh, work of art in the collection? And um, like every parent, um, my answer is no. But if you've been watching The Crown, you'll know that that is absolutely not true. And yeah, I do have a favorite. Maybe making a lot of enemies, but here it goes. My favorite work in the collection is by Robert Bechtel. And it's a painting titled Agua Caliente Nova from 1975. And it's a 
portrait of his family, his wife and kids, standing around their Nova, overlooking the Grand Canyon, and it's a stunning painting. So beautiful, and um, it's not on view very often, unfortunately, but I hope to change that very soon. Question six is, does the High Museum collect prints, drawings, works on paper? And absolutely we do. Uh, actually, works on paper is one of the great strengths of the contemporary and modern collections. And we've been building um, both the collection of drawings and prints steadily um, for the past 10 or 11 years or more. And uh, uh, we opened a works on paper gallery in 2018 when we did the reinstallation. So you'll begin to see more and more works from the works on paper collection uh, come out on view for special exhibitions, special collection exhibitions in that space. It's in the lower level of the High Museum. Question seven is who are the contemporary artists in Georgia who are on the rise? Mm, that's a tricky question because there's always emerging artists at any given time uh, everywhere, uh, especially artists who are emerging from graduate school or Artists who've been working for a while and have had a second wind in their career or have uh, changed directions in their studio. And um, also, uh, I'm just one person based here in Atlanta. There are many other uh, centers for artistic production across uh, Georgia. Um, and also, if I mention names, uh, no doubt I'll be in deep, deep duty because I will not mention a lot of names that I should be. But nevertheless, here it goes. Some people that come to mind, top of mind right now, include Davian Alston, Shaniqua Gay, Hassan Salehi, and Gerald Lavelle, among many, many others who uh, should be named, uh, but I don't have time to do that here. So, okay, question eight is, who are the top five artists to watch now? And I presume that means everywhere in the world, as opposed to just here in Atlanta. Um, and that's an impossible uh, question to answer, unfortunately. Wish I could. Um, and it's impossible for a number of reasons. One is that there's tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of artists whose work is uh, worth paying attention to and whose work often is given a platform uh, for presentation, whether it's in a, a public space like a museum or in a private gallery. Uh, also, I guess it depends on uh, the purpose for watching uh, an artist's work uh, and uh, the trajectory of their career. Um, one reason could be commercial, uh, for commercial purposes, you know, um, things that are driven by the market. Um, and for that reason, um, determine how often an artist's work is shown and how much press they get and how much coverage they get, critical coverage. Uh, there's also... Um, you know, artists whose work um, is relevant, is super relevant to what's going on in the world today, uh, whose work may have very little to do with the market. So um, I guess if I were to combine those two reasons, and there's others, uh, some artists who come to mind include uh, Vaughn Spann, uh, Maria de los Angeles, Rodriguez Jimenez, um, Felicita Maynard, and Derek Forger. There's other artists who are not as young as uh, those artists I, I just mentioned, whose work is having um, uh, renewed interest uh, and renewed relevancy today, uh, including Lola Flash, great artist, Yuji Agamatsu, uh, and Robin Brock, all great artists whose work has uh, really responded to um, things, uh, aspects of contemporaneity today in wonderfully uh, surprising and relevant ways. Question nine is, what's the favorite place I've lived and why? And um, I'm not lying or brown nosing at all by saying Atlanta is my favorite place where I've lived. I've, I'm from Chicago and I've lived in Honolulu. I live in Honolulu um, and Chicago, and, uh, but I, I especially uh, am fond of Atlanta. And everywhere that I've lived, it's always been about the people uh, I meet and the people who I work with and the sense of community. In Honolulu, it was called Aloha. And um, in the South, I think there's a lot of Aloha here in Atlanta. And I've responded to that from the moment I moved to the city. 
So uh, Atlanta's the place for me, uh, has been for 11 years, and I hope for many, many more. Question 10 is, what is uh, my next dream acquisition? And there's a few I have in mind. Um, of course, we have limited resources, so I have to prioritize. And so uh, my next dream uh, would be a book by Teresita Fernandez. It's called Nishijin Sky from 2014. Something that she made in collaboration with craftsmen, master craftsmen from Kyoto, uh, from a company called Hoso, which was founded in 1688. And it's absolutely stunning work um, uh, in which uh, the artist has combined her interest in the landscape, the sublime landscape, and this tradition of uh, folding screen making uh, in Japan. Uh, the work doesn't fold, it's suspended, it's something you, you walk around, it's uh, semi-transparent and absolutely beautiful. So that's something that uh, I'm hoping and praying that I can bring into the collection this coming year. Question 11 is, what new projects are you working on now? Um, well, there's a lot of them, actually. So um, if I can think of all of them in one minute, I'll give it my best shot. Uh, the next exhibition coming up is uh, an exhibition of the work of David Driscoll, and something I've been working on for a couple of years now with colleagues in Maine. Um, it will be opening at the High Museum in February, so come check it out, please. It's going to be a beautiful show. It's traveling to the Portland Museum of Art in Maine. and also the Phillips Collection in DC. So that's coming up next for me, uh, followed by a print show, uh, works by Cause, the artist who made my beautiful t-shirt here. Uh, to answer an earlier question, do we collect prints? Boy, how do we do? And one of the artists we have in great depth in terms of prints is Cause. So we're doing a, a, an exhibition of practically all the prints that Cause has produced, at least up until the time of the exhibition. That's next fall. Uh, fall of 21. Um, then in the next year, I'll be working on an exhibition, or I have been working on an exhibition for a couple of years, about the topic of love in contemporary art and how artists uh, have thought about love as a transformative agent uh, uh, or an agent uh, for change, social change, um, in the world today. So that's coming up in uh, March of 22. And I uh, have to backtrack because there is another exhibition we're opening in March of 21 uh, uh, by Ragnar Kjartansson, an Icelandic artist, and we're presenting his uh, monumental nine-part video, The Visitors, um, just after the Julie, Julie Maratu show closes. So uh, come check that out. It's going to be in the same gallery as the Maratu exhibition, so you know where to find it. Um, and I could go on, but uh, a lot's going on in well, to answer your question, Brian, um, Brian Donnelly asked me about how many days I go to the gym, you know, this past nine months, because I apparently um, come across as looking ready for the next year. Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Brian, because it's something that I always think about, you know, I try to work out my brain and my body at the same time. And so I don't go to the gym. I have made uh, a little gym here, right here in my kitchen, and um, I'm answering your question in the middle of my workout, which consists of uh, oh, <laughs> some sit-ups, and then um, I move on to push-ups, and then some um, uh, lifts using books, and you know, the biggest books I've got in the house, uh, I think one of them is yours and Jose Parla's and uh, some other books that are big and hefty that can keep me in shape. So, um, thanks for noticing, you know, my fitness and I appreciate it, sir. And I look forward to seeing you, maybe if I don't die here in the next year. Okay, bye. Again, this is uh, Michael Rooks, and I have uh, been answering your questions for the Ask Me Anything uh, episode of our Instagram stories, High Museum's Instagram stories. Um, so thanks for all your questions. I hope I answered them adequately, and uh, uh, hope to see you at the museum someday.